nerves coming to the wall. Uh, living life for the next drop. Nurse coming to the wall.
My knees are feeling weak Your body's close to me I want you to come Rescue me
All right, thank you very much for tuning in to this uh, evening's game, Cosmic Remix vs. Genius Uprising. The game is going to be starting here shortly, so stay tuned, and after they do their pro draft, we will get into the client draft and start the games. Thank you very much.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's scrimmages. We have Cosmic Remix versus Genius Uprising. Um, from what I understand, these teams know each other, so this is going to be quite the battle back and forth. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. They're just now finishing the pick band phase in the Pro Tool, and we are going to get into the client draft here shortly. So, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will get started here in just a moment. Impure fools. Now I'm angry.
All right, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. This is Cosmic Relief versus Genius Uprising. You got to see the draft there. We have a couple minutes for the delay, so we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the teams. Just so you're aware, Genius Uprising is the blue team. Cosmic Relief is the red team. Uh, if you're watching the draft, let me know who you think won the draft. Do you think it's the red team or the blue team? Who do you think is sitting pretty right now? Um, if we're looking at everything here, I think the Kale is a super great late, uh, late game hyperscaling champion, but so is the Tristana. That's a really good answer for that. The set's objective is going to have to be to shut down that Kale early, not let her scale up, try and deny her gold, try and deny her experience, and stop her from hitting 6, 11, and so on as much as he can. Uh, we've got a Nocturne versus a Lee Sen. Both of those champions are terrifying if they get onto the back lane. Nocturne, using his Paranoia, is going to just shut down the map, but you've also got Lee Sen that can kick some tanks out, like the Terra can get him out of the show, so that they can work on the squishies in a team fight. You've got Silas and Orianna. Both of those champions have a lot of abilities for team fights. You've got the Orianna who can sit there and crowd control everybody with her R, but you've also got the Silas that can take the Kale R, that can take the Orianna R, that can take the Taric R, and make those things all work for their team comp. So it's kind of terrifying having to play your own team as well as some of the enemy team. Um, you've got Tristana, Zaya. Um, Tristana is just busted with the ability that she can take can she can take uh, she can push a wave she can take turrets um, she is going to be one another one like I said that hyperscale that's just going to be on the enemy team that they have to watch they have to try and shut down so I'd expect Nocturne to be playing around bot side a little bit in this game trying to make sure the Tristana doesn't get too big too soon um, and then additionally you've got the Taric and the Seraphine both alts are going to be huge. The Terra can keep anybody alive for a while, which sometimes you don't want to see. And the Seraphine can just catch an entire team off guard, charm them into a, a single spot, and they're blown up. So again, if you're watching, let me know who you think won. Genius Uprising on the blue side with the Kale, Nocturne, Oriana, Zaya, Taric, or if it's the Set, Lee, Sen, Silas, Tristana, Seraphine on the red side with Cosmic Relief. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But we are going to get into the game right now. Let's see what kind of... Uh, Let's see what they picked with their runes and their summoner spells, because this will be kind of interesting. I've been seeing a lot of the upper elos not take flash on the top laners, um, just based off who they're playing. A lot of Gwen, a lot of Akali not having that. But it looks like we're going to see Kale and Set both with the flash teleport. Same thing with the mid, heal on both our ADCs. And we've got the Ignite on Taric and the Exhaust on the Seraphine. Um, I think it's a little bit more kill pressure to the side of the Taric, and uh, I'm excited to see how that plays out. But again, my big thing for this game is going to be watching the junglers. I think the junglers are going to have the biggest impact on the game, at least early game, and trying to decide whether Tristana or Kale is going to scale harder faster, and that's what this is going to come down to. So we are going to get into the game here as they load up on the Rift. Thank you very much for tuning in, and stay with us for just another uh, couple moments, and we'll be ready. All right, and these teams are loading up onto the rift right now. And we'll see what they buy if they get anything crazy or spicy here. Nothing too wild coming through at this point. We've got Challenging Smite on both of our junglers, Dorm Blades on the tops. Um, Seraphine going for more of the poke. Tarek going to go for more of taking that CS and helping him scale himself well as well. Dark Seal coming through on Silas and the Corrupting Potion on Oriana. Both teams relatively standard five point out across the board for the most point. And we have a pause coming through. Just a moment while we wait for everything to load up here. There will be a small delay after the pause. That's just the way the system works. I apologize. Let's check and see if we go in here. Looks like somebody disconnected. Bear with us while we go through these technical difficulties. Thank you very much for staying tuned in. If you haven't hit it yet, also hit the follow button. 
We do scrims almost every night of the week. I normally take one night off to spend with my family and hang out a little bit, but every night of the week we're normally doing some high-level scrim here on the channel, uh, shoutcasting it out. And, uh, you know, thank you very much to Cosmic Remix and Genius Uprising for letting me stream the game and for letting me shoutcast it. I appreciate you guys. Best of luck to both teams as we get here onto the Rift. Let's see if we've got any update... The game should be starting here any moment now. I apologize about the delay. Remember, we want to keep our eye on the Kale. We want to keep our eye on those junglers as well, okay? Those are going to be where the big plays are coming from. And here we go. Back into the game. There we go. Nocturne dropping some vision. Switching back for the sweeper. There's the pause I was talking about. Since it was paused for so long, we will have a slight delay here again. And it should be popping up now. There we go. And let's see where the junglers go. It looks like Nocturne is going to be heading towards the top side. Lee Sin is going to be going towards the bot with his uh, duo leashing him. Kale going to help out the Nocturne top side. So kind of interesting seeing him start uh, on the top side, but that just means he's going to be coming down bot, which makes sense. He wants to be down in that area to stop the kit Tristana. And I'm going to turn that off for now. I'll turn it back on every once in a while to check it out. And this Silas looking for early engages, throwing out his... Uh, Duct abscond, trying to get a hold of the Oriana and lay down some damage on her. Especially once he hits level 3 and he has all those abilities, he will be able to trade very heavily with her. A little damage coming in onto the Zion, nothing too crazy. Oriana gets level 2 over the Silas. And that Seraphine's doing a very good job of hitting him with the slows. Here comes the damage now onto the Oriana. Nice trade out in favor of the Silas there. A lot of damage coming down onto the Zaya here. And the blue team finds themselves poked out heavily. They're going to have to try and CS and catch up what they can here. Meanwhile, the Silas also taking quite a bit of damage in the mid lane. And this is what I'm talking about. That Tristana is going to continue to push in those waves, deny gold, deny experience to the blue team. They're going to have to play smart here, and they're going to have to try and figure out a way around it, because otherwise she's just going to continue to just blow up those minions, press in that wave, deny gold, deny experience. So I'm very excited to see how this all turns out. Silas doing a good job of CSing there. The blue teams actually look like they're trying to freeze this wave here, which is great. They're going to make it so that Nocturne can come in here for a gank and try and shut down one of these two. He's coming in, and he is spotted on the vision. And he's just going to go ahead and walk his way up to the scuttle. Nocturne trying to hold this wave. Not a, I'm sorry, not Nocturne. Cal trying to hold this wave. Not a lot she can do here. We'll go ahead and pop this up for us real quickly. Yeah, this Kale's being denied a lot of gold, a lot of CS, and uh, yeah, there's nothing much that she can do at this point, trying to stop the back on the Silas. Good job there. Oh, here comes the Lee Sin. He gets the kick off. He's not able to do anything. A lot of damage coming through the flash for the W to land, and it looks like it's going to be traded out. He gets the Execute. Congratulations to Set. He is able to both trade over the kill on the kill, get first blood, and not take any damage throughout that fight. And he will earn first blood in the match.
Silas now getting hunted down. The flash comes out of both of them, and Orion is able to lock up the second kill of the game and trade it back over to the side of Genius Uprising. We've still got Nocturne hovering around in the bot side area. Lee Sin looks like he might be coming in a little bit to join the fray. A lot of damage coming down onto the Zaya. The stun comes out from the Taric, but nothing will land, and Tristana will get the kill onto Zaya. They've got three members in the area. They may be looking to have a dive here happen. We're going to go down to the bot. We're going to see a dive trying to happen down here. A lot of damage coming out onto the Taric. The, stand land, the stun lands. And Lee Sin is able to get the kill onto the Taric, but he will take one too many turret shots and fall himself. That okay, that's okay. It leaves the bot duo a lot of time to go ahead and clean up one of those pl turret plates and get up to speed. Kale is now coming online at level 6. She has become a range champion, and I would expect to see this game start flipping over in her side. She is also up in CS as well, so... This will not go good for the set any longer, I imagine. Hey, thank you for hitting that follow button entitled Gamer. I appreciate it, man. Um, if you're watching, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the game so far. Get your uh, input. We do see Dragon is up. And it looks like we're starting to get vision around that area down on the bot side. And the Zaya doing a very good job of farming it out down there, especially with the position that she was in, getting pushed into her own turret by the Tristana. She's doing very well catching the CS, trying to keep that experience, trying to keep that uh, that gold up where she needs to, especially after having lost a kill over to the Tristana. You'll need every bit of it. Right now, things pretty quiet, but we have Lee Sin coming in for a gank here. The Q comes out, lands down, a lot of damage coming through. Kale taking quite a bit of damage from this set. The pull came through. His conqueror is proc. She's trying to run away. He's going to chase it through, take a turret shot. The W lands, but the R comes out from Kale. She is able to survive the dive from set. She barely has any health, and it is very risky for her to stay here. He's taking another turret shot. That seems like a little bit greedy back to me being up that close, but it's going to. She stops it. She's going to stay in the area. The slow coming out of Seraphine as they try and get a little bit of engage here and push that wave in. That kill still hovering in the area. I would have I would have tried to just back off and get back by now. She's wasted a lot of time, tried to catch a little bit of that experience, but not much she can do. Dragon, meanwhile, being worked by the side of Cosmic Remix, and it is secured. And this Silas taking a lot of damage in the trades from the Oriana. Waiting for the Nocturne. He's going to go in onto the Lee Sin. He lands the Fear. He blasts them over to get him closer to the enemy team. Lee Sin trying to get out of there. He's war able to ward hop. And he will get away. The Nocturne drops his Paranoia, lands it onto the Lee Sin, and secures the kill. Looks like for a second there, Lee Sen was in his shop and did not know what was going on for a moment. Very unfortunate to have that happen. And we've got quite the game. Three kills on both sides. Gold relatively equal. A thousand up to the side of Cosmic Remix for the first blood. And it looks like they're doing a little bit better job of CSing across the map as a whole. There comes the Oriana alt onto the uh, onto the Silas. He's taking quite a bit of damage as she moves the ball through. The wave is now catching him. The ball hits on. And there's a little bit of a slow there. He's still taking some damage. The flash comes out, and they're able to flash away from each other. Both flash expended, but Silas is able to stay alive there. Lee Sin looks like he's coming in for the counter onto the Oriana. She's going to back off and respect that she has no idea where he's at right now. And nothing will come of it. Good job, Lee Sin, being in the right place at the right time. And good job for both those, uh, for the Silas for flashing away right when he needed to. Otherwise, that ball would have connected with him and he would have been down for the count. 
And the last thing you want is for Oriana to continue to get a CS lead and get more kills. This is going to be the second turret going over to the side of Cosmic Remix's bot duo. They are going to get pretty big here. We're going to do a little check-in with the gold real fast. We've got Tristana up about 600. Mid relatively e uh, even, a little bit of gold onto the Oriana. And uh, Kale finds herself down about 1,000 compared to the set. Not where she wants to be either. But as she becomes more, uh, as she gets more scaling, as she becomes more of a real champion and gets online, it looks like they're going to go for the dive here. She's taking a couple turret shots. She's barely going to get out with her life. And the Nocturne's going to very graciously help crash this wave in for the Kale so that she can get a reset. Her uh, teleport's going to be back online here shortly. I expect her to just hop right back in lane. Nocturne may be hanging in the area. We've got Lee Sin hovering too. It looks like they want to make a dive onto this. There goes the paranoia. The fear comes out. The ult goes down onto Nocturne, and Kale secures the kill onto Set. Oriana, meanwhile, dropping her ult onto the Silas while fight breaks out, but Jet's able to come back in and get the kill onto the Nocturne. He is going heavy after this, Kale. He is going to get the kill and lock it down, and that's a double kill over to the side of Lee Sin for Cosmic Re Remix. Meanwhile, this Oriana continuing to poke out heavy damage onto the Silas, but not able to secure the second kill for herself. This has been a very spicy game. Back and forth trading. The junglers have been everywhere during this game. Tower dives happening across the map. The set continuing to work on the sail. Uh, the Kale. Whoops. The flash comes out from the Oriana. The kick goes in. I don't know why we got swapped over to that. I apologize. Looks like Oriana is barely able to escape with her life. Teleport's coming down from Kale. He's going to give the chase. Misses the Q onto the uh, Lee Sin. But we've got a 3v3 breaking out here in the bot lane. And we've got a lot of memories on the bot side of this map. Meanwhile, Rift Herald on the side of Set going to go ahead and crash into the top turret. And he's going to probably get first turret here. That's a lot of damage coming on to that, uh, that top side tier 1 turret with the Rift, uh, Rift Herald there. He's going to stay in the area and knock it down. Yes, he is. Meanwhile, Kale receding and trying to stay alive. Ooh, the double slow, double stun comes through onto the enemy bot lane, but now we've got Nocturne in the area. His ult is almost up, and I would expect for a Paranoia to be dropped here in just a moment. Dragon going to be spawning here in just under 15 seconds. We've got four members of the blue team, four members of the red team in the area. Set making his way down potentially to the... Uh, to the dragon and we're going to see a fight breaking out here in the river all right everybody we're going to see nocturne's backing the leeson starting the drake and uh we're going to see something going on here i'm looking for a fight leeson starting up the drake nocturne again starting to back getting pings coming out it's about halfway down We've got people coming in now. The paranoia comes down. The smite comes out, and Nocturne is able to steal the Drake away from the remix team. Fight's breaking out left and right. The Terra cult comes down. We've got quite a bit of trading going on to the Terra. He's a tanky boy right now, though, and he's going to survive a little bit more of the damage. The Oriana coming in to flank the backside, however, Lee Sin's able to lock down the Terra. Tristana gets the kill, or I mean, Tristana is rather is killed by the uh, Zaya. We've got Teleport coming down from the set. He's going to try and close in, but the kill will go over to the Oriana, who's chasing down, gets a double kill, shut down onto the Seraphine, and set will get taken out. That is an ace in favor of Genius Uprising. And that was a hell of a play coming out of those teams. Teleports across the board. The paranoia from the Nocturne in order to smite the dragon while the Lee Sin couldn't see it. And then we've got the turret plates just now falling as the blue team is going to pressure this bottom uh, tier 1 turret and go ahead and push it in. Let's take a look and see where we're at right now. We've got Mythics coming online across the board. Each team has a Drake while we are going to have an Infernal Soul fought over after this game. The gold is equal for each team. The turrets are equal for each team. And we have a hell of a match in our, our hands here, folks.
Now, one thing we've got to be aware of. Kale is about to hit level 11, which will again upgrade her abilities and her ranged attacks. So we've got to give respect to that in the team fights. If she gets a couple autos off, she can start to melt some of those squishy members of the team. She's already got her Nash's Tooth completed and she went Berserker Greaves. We've got a alt coming out from Oriana. Everybody gets dashed in and it looks like Lee Sin is able to lock down the kill on the Oriana thanks to the Silas alt having uh, stolen the Oriana alt and sucked her back into her own alt. Not where you want to find yourself if you're Oriana. Set, meanwhile, starting this uh, Rift Herald up, it looks like. Nope, he's going to just go ahead and go back to the top lane. Fights are breaking out across the map. And a lot of pressure coming from the red team on this mid turret. It's still relatively healthy, but they're playing around in the area, not too afraid. Kale trying to get that solo XP on the bot side, push that out and catch some of that wave, but we've got a fight breaking out here. Nocturne drops the ult, he gets the fear, he gets kicked away, Flash comes out of Lee Sin and he's going to survive the engage from the Nocturne. We've got four members from the side of Genius Uprising. It looks like they're going to try and lock down this Rift Herald while it is still up and on the map and give themselves the pressure they need to try and return an answer for those turrets. We now have the side of Cosmic Remix up two turrets to the side of um, genius Uprising. We've got a lot of red showing up on the Kale, taking quite a bit of damage, looking for the re-engage, poking back out. Lee Sin fishing for his Q, but doesn't land anything, and all five members of the blue team are going to retreat, having secured the Rift Herald at this point. This Lee Sin is a very big boy. Five, three, and two. He is going to start making things happen, I promise you. Watch out for his cues to land. Watch for those kicks in the fights. He's either going to kick a squishy into his team or kick one of the tanks out of their team. It doesn't matter what he does. He's going to start having a very big impact on the game. And we see Kalen set now returning to the top side. Mid going bot and the bot lane's going mid. If you can keep track of that, you're doing a good job. And uh, if I had to bet, they're going to drop Rift Herald mid. Try and get that mid pressure. It's very important for the game. They still have their mid turret up, so they want to make sure they have cryo in mid. It helps a lot with the objectives. So we're going to see how the rest of this game plays out. But I think that's where they're going to take that. We've got Silas. He lands his stun. He's doing some damage. He gets the Kingmaker on there. The ult comes out of Nocturne. The Paranoia lands. The Fear lands. A lot of damage coming on to the... Uh, on to the Silas. He gets the stun back onto him, flashes out of there, taking a lot of damage. The stun comes out from the Taric, and he's not able to trade a kill. He will fall to the Nocturne. And very good play from Nocturne, being in the right time, uh, right area at the right time. Didn't quite get his ult down in time to save the Oriana, but is able to trade over that kill. His W makes it very threatening, though. When he lands his W, he can heal up quite a bit. Um, especially if he starts to go some of the healing items. It looks like he uh, he didn't do anything in his runes to go after that, but if he goes even a Spirit Massage, that could be big for him to block some of the damage and to get some of the additional healing out. We find Drake up on the map. This is the first Infernal of the game, and they did go ahead and drop that Rift Herald mid to secure the mid tower turret for themselves. And now we've got a fight coming out. Lee Sin dropping the smite down um, a little... A little... Uh, out of place if you ask me because now they don't have it for this they are going to secure it up though Escanor falls the set will be down it's a 5 v 4 in the map but they got the first uh they got the drake now we've got silas falling to the nocturne it's a 5 v 3 kale intent continuing to chase down the least end kick comes through on the kale uh, there's going to be a disengage, and you've got a 2-4-0 trade going over in favor of Genius Uprising they did not get the drake but they got two kills was it worth it I don't know we'll have to find out there's going to be a lot of pressure coming, though, from this five-man team while they're still down for another seven seconds. I'd expect some pressure to come mid, and they're going to lose some of their jungle for it. The price you pay for winning the Drake. That being said, that does put them at two Drakes up. They are in a position to be the first ones to get on to Soul Point. Um, we've got, uh, it's not going to be, it's going to be at least ten minutes before we see Soul enter the map. Both of the teams still very even in gold at this point, so I'm very excited for how this is going. 
Kale looks like she's finally hit level 11. She's 12, so she has upgraded her um, her autos. When she hits level 16, she will be the fully realized damage champion that she can be. Um, and yes, very excited to see how the rest of this game plays out. Let's go ahead and pull up and take a quick look at everything. Uh, we've got all of the Mythics online besides the Kale who goes Nash's Tooth first item. That makes sense for her build. We're taking a look at... The Tristana up a whole lot of CS. Everything else pretty equal as we're looking across the map. I like the game state we're in. This is very favorable for either team right now. With Baron up on the field, I don't know exactly who's going to go for what at this point, but I'm looking forward to seeing the next fight break out. Set looks like he's going to try and engage on the Kale. She hits with the slow. She's getting some damage on the PTA proc. He's going to run out of there with his life and leave her to CS. He's going to rotate mid, get spotted out on Vision. They're aware that the set's roaming up. Oh! A lot of damage coming out onto the Tarek from the Lee Sin. However, the Zaya is turning it back around. And the Tarek will fall to Escanor. A lot of damage comes onto the Zaya now. And that is a 2-0 trade in favor of the Cosmic Remix Red Team. They are going to ping Baron and run over there. Oriana trying to play some defense, slot, stop them from coming over. Everybody from the blue team that's alive is running into the area to try and contest this. And we'll have to see how it goes. Now, it's still relatively early. The Baron has just popped up here recently. So I'm not sure what they're going to try and do, but they could take a lot of damage here and end up trading over their whole entire team to a good fight. And Oriana, ha ooh, Oriana tries to take the Blast Clone away, but will get blown up by the Tristana. It's now a 3-0 trade in favor of the Red Team. They are trying to hover in the area. They're melting it down, but now Tarek and Zyre are up. The Red Team still taking quite a bit of damage. The Kale alt going on to the, uh, goes on to the Tristana as she goes in. I'm sorry, rather goes on to the Kale. She will fall, and this is exactly what I was worried about. The red team's going to get really low in health here as the rest of the healthy blue members come in. Flashes out of the way of the stun. A lot of damage coming out from the Lee Sin. He kicks, goes in, gets the kill, and trades it over onto the Nocturne. So we will not see Baron come up, but we will end up seeing four kills going over total and uh, to the side of Cosmic Remix, while three went over to the side of Genius Uprising. I don't know if it was the right call to start Baron there. Um, like I said, they started fighting there by the Baron pit. They knew they were a little bit low. They started getting chunked out by the Baron. They took a couple fights. They blew up the Oriana, which is great. But then by then, you've got Zaya, you've got Tarek roaming into the fight now. They're both very healthy. You guys have already taken a fight, taken some damage from Baron. They try to re-engage on the Baron again, and it just doesn't make sense. So I don't know if that was the right call, but we do have the third... Uh, we do have the Infernal Drake coming up. This could be the third Drake for Cosmic Remix, um, or it could be tied up by the G uh, Genius Uprising team. If you're just joining us, thank you for tuning in. We've got a hell of a game here. We've got a 15 to 14 match uh, game. We've got almost equal gold, equal turrets. It is a banger. If you are just tuning in, hit the follow button for more content like this. I'd love to see you here more often. And let's get ready for this Drake to spawn in 15 seconds. Kale getting caught out by the Tristana and the Lee Sen. A lot of damage coming out. She's not going to be able to survive, and that'll be Tristana that locks up the kill. That puts the red team in a man advantage, and they are already up one Drake. This is not going to go good for them. Oriana alt comes out. The paranoia down. Lee Sen hops in, trying to do some damage, but he's going to fall to the Zaya. It's now a 4v4. Looks like Oriana gets taken out by the Tristana. Seraphine will drop down the Tarek, and now it is a 2v4. A lot of damage coming out. And it will be the Silas who locks up the kill on the Zaya. Nocturne's still alive. The one person you hope would fall throughout all of that because there's still a chance to contest the dragon. But I don't know that much will come of it. All four members going to just melt down through this dragon. Nocturne coming up. He might try and make something happen. He does not get anything. And that is going to be Soul Point going over to the side of Cosmic Remix. They get one more dragon. They will have Soul all to themselves. And they will have quite the Baron stack on them. They're going to put a lot of pressure here on this mid turret. Try and knock it down with that Tristana E. It's just going to make it happen even faster. 
the red team, the Cosmic Remix team, is starting to get a little out of control here. They are winning the fights, they are taking the right fights, and they are getting the objectives. The blue team has got to find a way to slow down the pace of Cosmic Remix. If Uprising, uh, if Genius Uprising cannot find a way to slow down Cosmic Remix, they are not going to be able to win this game. They've got to find a way to grab the pace, set the tone, whether that's using Nocturne to get onto the Tristana, using the stun that comes through with the Tarek in conjunction with that, using the Kale ult with that Nocturne. They've got to find a way for him to get onto the back line, even if it's with the Orianna ults. There's got to be some way to lock down and shut down that Tristana. And we've got a lot of blue members roaming up towards that top turret, trying to get all the tier one pressure they can. And it is going to be every tier one turret falling finally for the red team as well. Both teams tied in turrets. You've got a fight breaking out here at Baron. Blue team trying to decide they want to go for the Baron now. A lot. Teleport coming in from the set. Silas still finds himself down in the bot lane. His teleport is up, though. He could join this fight if he wants to. He's going to continue to put pressure on the bot side. Blue team drops the paranoia, gets the fear out onto the, Lisa, onto the set. He jumps into the back line. Zaya is able to take out the Tristana. It's now a 5v3 here on the top side. Teleport coming in from the Silas to the mid lane. Escanor hanging around the top side, wanting to get in on this action, try and find a flank. We've got a 4v5 brewing out. Damage from the Baron coming from them. The charm comes out from the Seraphine. Zai is able to get the kill onto the Lee Sin. There's no more threat of the jungler on the enemy team. We've got a lot of damage coming out on the Silas. He gets blown up by the Orianna. Set is taking quite a bit of damage, and he will fall to the blue team. That is a ace for the side of Genius Uprising, and that is exactly what they needed to get back in this game. They are going to be able to get Baron off of this. They are going to be able to get some objectives off of this. And that's how you turn around a game. Take notes, boys and girls. We find that Genius Uprising is back in this game. They are, sh they are actually in the lead by 300 gold now. And they are going to be giving themselves a run for the money. Thank you very much. And here's Baron on the blue team. Barely alive, Oriana going to decide to take the blue buff. Oh, I was supposed to say greedy Oriana going to try and take the gromp, but she's going to go ahead and back and reset here. Smart decision on her end. And we have the blue team with the Baron buff. We've got the red team with, uh, well, with more drakes at this point. They do have the objectives from that side of it. Um, I was always taught, take the drakes over the Baron. The Baron is, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes, but those drakes last the entire game. So we'll see who uses it better here. But right now we have a hell of a game brewing out. We've got Lee Sin hitting the Scryer Bloom, getting some vision on that blue team, moving to the bot side. We've got Drake up in about one minute, just a little over. And so they're going to try and get Pryo here in the bot lane and put themselves in a position to fight for Drake. Lee Sin lands the Q, nothing going to come of it. Tristana deep in the enemy air area, trying to break a little bit of that pressure off from the Drake, but I don't know if it's going to do anything. We've got 30 seconds until the Drake spawns, and we've got a hell of a fight breaking out here in the... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was a little fight going on there. There will be here in a moment. Interesting way to use your Baron if you're the blue team. I know the Drake's spawning, but I might have tried to get objective pressure and had like a 2-3 split in the mid bot. Tried to get one of those turrets and then rotated back to Drake. Either way, they're going to win the fight here. Take out Seraphine, who gets caught out of position. It's now a 5v4 on the map. Drake spawning here right now. And they are going to put themselves in a position to go ahead and get their second Drake of the game. And um, then we'll have to see what they do with the rest of their Baron. If they'll push and get objectives, if they're just going to look to try and get some picks here, they might all march mid with it. We'll see.
and let's take a look at the timers. We've got Baron joining the map here in just under three minutes. So that would be the next fight I expect to see break out. Like I said, kind of interesting that I didn't see the blue team take that Baron buff. Put pressure on the mid and bot side turrets. Try and get one of those objectives and then rotate back. To the Drake, I feel like they could have been a little bit more efficient with that uh, with that Baron. But either way, they get themselves back into the game. They get themselves another Drake, which puts them even closer to being able to contest with those item uh, with the enemy team. And uh, we've got a lot of positioning and vying over the top side of the enemy jungle here for them because they want to be able to get that uh, Baron again. So they're dropping vision, clearing out enemy vision, and trying to make sure that Cosmic Remix has a very dark side of the map there. Now what they don't know is they've got vision all through the river, so they're going to get popped out anyways. But at least that half of the map is dark for them. And Kale has hit level 16, so she is fully operational now. She has her fully empowered autos. She is going to continue to just pressure this bot, uh, top side tier 2 turret. A lot of damage coming out onto the uh, set. He flashes to go away from the Oriolt, and he is going to go ahead and take his life back to the base reset. And we've got about a minute 20 until Baron spawns. Blue team continuing to hover on this top side of the map. Good job putting pressure on the base. Good job getting those extra objectives and trying to get priority. The stun barely misses by the, uh, by the Silas. However, this Kale is out of position, gets stunned up and blown up by the enemy team. And she's down for 52 seconds at this point. That's going to be a very long time not to have your hyper carry on the field. However, it will be just in time for Baron to spawn. So we'll have to see how this all breaks out. Red team now chasing the blue members through their bottom side jungle into the river. Getting popped out on vision. A little bit of a greedy back attempt there by the... Uh, the re-engage coming through, the paranoia comes on to the uh, Tristana, but she's able to lock up the kill onto the Taric. Uh, she does end up falling to the uh, Nocturne, and we've got a hell of a fight brewing here. A lot of damage comes on to the Silas. He has to flash it away. The Orianna, for some reason, going into three enemy members trying to get that kill. She does get it onto the Seraphine, but she will fall herself. The Fear comes out onto the set, and he is going to go ahead and run away. Now we've got a teleport coming on from the kill. She's joined the fight back. The Q comes out onto the set. He's going to land it. The Silas trying to stay alive. Barely. The Fear comes out. Still stays in contact with the set, but he will hit the blast, uh, the blast cone, and it looks like he may die here. Yep. The Kale is able to lock up the kill onto the set. It was a four for four trade. Nobody really got the advantage there, but blue team finds themselves with more members on the map at this second. They are going to put some pressure on the bot side turret, and uh, I would expect to see them dropping back for this, uh, this next Drake, honestly. All right, we've got 30 seconds till the Drake spawns. All members from every team about ready to be up as set will join the Rift right now. And we are going to see how these teams prioritize these objectives. We've got Baron up right now. We've got Drake up in 20 seconds. We've got both teams hovering in the bot side area. And um, we've got teleports up on the Oriana and the set, but they seem to both be in the area already, so we'll have to see how it goes. Red team slowly moving up towards the Baron. I think that's going to be their call, as the blue team notices they're not getting any kind of contestation. They need to start running towards the Baron themselves to contest it. Nocturne is going to go ahead and solo the Drake. Meanwhile, these four members of the blue team are going to hover in the area, trying to see what's going on. Kale going to be a little forward here, putting some damage onto the set. She has become a very big girl at this point. She has a Rift Maker, she has her Morelcons, and she has her Nasher's Tooth with the Berserker Greaves. She is going to start to get very big. The blue team secures the Drake tying up everything as far as the Drakes go. Both teams here are on Soul Point. 
And so we're going to see a fight likely break out at Baron as the blue team starts up Baron. They're melting this thing down with the Kale and the Zaya here. It's at half health, a quarter health, and it is all the way gone. No chance of the red team getting in on that. They barely take any damage. This is their second Baron of the game, and they're going to go ahead and press forward here. Nocturne Alt comes in with the stun from the Taric. The Seraphine gets blown up. The Tristana taking quite a bit of damage right now. The Zaya going in, trying to get the kill flashes after and locks it up. Silas, meanwhile, gets blown up by the Zaya. And we are going to see the Lee Sin get blown up by the Kale. Kale now chasing the set down underneath his turret, drops her ult. A lot of damage coming through. His ult comes in. And that is a blue team ace after getting the Baron. Good job to the blue team. They're going to put a lot of pressure here. I don't think that Seraphine will be able to get up in time to defend out through the rest of this onslaught as they siege into the Nexus turrets. One will fall. Two will fall. Ten seconds till Seraphine's up. I don't think it's going to be enough, and that is going to be the end of the game. The Genius Uprising will secure the first win in this series. Woo! What a back-and-forth banger of a game. I love to see it. Thank you very much for tuning in. We've got two more games just like that. Stay tuned, and thank you very much for watching.
All right, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in. Game one went over to the side of Genius Uprising. We are going to get game two started here in just a couple moments, so stay tuned for that. Also, I just got word I'm going to be interviewing a couple members of the Genius Uprising team after the match. So if you'd like to hear what they had to say about some of these games, stay tuned after the matches and we will get their thoughts on the game. Um, stay tuned and we'll get started with game two here in just a moment.
Right, and thank you very much for tuning back in. We've got the first bands coming through. Looks like we're going to see Nocturne get taken out of the running. Apparently they did not want to see that come up again. Now, for this game, we've got Cosmic Remix on the blue side, Genius Uprising on the red side. And we have another Thresh band coming through. Kale is going to be banned as well. Apparently, the side of Cosmic Remix does not like some of the picks they played against last time and wants to take that out as quickly as possible. Viego will be banned from the red side. We'll see what the final bans for this first half of the game look like here. Ivern going to be taken out. He was taken out last time, so I'm assuming that's just a respect ban to Jungle Simp. And Senna will be taken out. She is also taken out last hand, uh, last game. So we'll see how this goes. Um, if you're following in the chat, first off, hit the follow button. I'd love to have you guys watch more content like this. Secondly, though, let me know what you think of the pick band phases. We're going through this. I'd love to get your thoughts on it. We're going to see Orin locked in. And Akali. So, uh, Orn is a tanky boy, but normally he builds a lot of armor, so I'm excited to see how the Kali will go into the Orn. Um, a Kali is also devastating onto a backline. If you've got some squishies on your team and she gets back there, she will destroy them. If you were watching the LCS game yesterday, Perks popped off on her um, and got a quadra kill in one of the fights over by Baron. So, very excited to see how that'll turn out. We've got a Trundle and a Volley Bear. Um, I love Trundle, I love Volley Bear, I play both of them in the jungle when I play, so I'm very excited to see how that will work out. Silas again going to get picked up for the side of Cosmic Remix, he was in last game's uh, mid as well, and Oriana was played last game as well, so the mid matchup is going to look very similar to how it did the game before this. And let's see what the bands come through as, we've got a Hecarim ban. He is still getting quite a lot of play, so he can run in. His ganks are quite devastating. Malphite going to get taken out of there. Lee Sen is removed from the uh, playing field. He was played last game, so apparently they did not want any of that. And Zen Zhao, who has also been very strong in games. We've got a Kaisa locked in. Maddie, uh, Matt G is going to go with Ezreal. The Divine Sunderer build on Ezreal right now is just broken, so that's going to be very exciting to see. And we'll have the Nautilus locked in. And against the Alistar. So, 
If you're watching, let me know in the comments who you think won. Is it the Orin, Trundle, Silas, Ez, Nautilus team, or is it the Akali, Volibear, Oriana, Kaisa, and Alistar team? Um, if we're looking at it just tit for tat, you've got two ta two teams, each with a tanks on there. You've got Orin and Nautilus and the Alistar and the Volibear. You've got some AP damage coming out in the Silas and the Oriana. You've got two very solid uh, damage dealers from Kaisa and Ezreal. The big difference here for me is you've got a little bit more of that Bruiser Trundle, or you've got the Burst Assassin Akali. I think it's going to matter how those two play out in the game. If Akali is able to get big enough and get onto the back line, she can do some devastating damage to Ezreal and to Silas, and even to Trundle, let's not lie. Um, but if they're able to help shut down that, uh, that Akali, make sure she doesn't get too big, and you have, you know two tanks, a bruiser, and then you've got Silas who can also heal up, they can extend some of those fights and really put themselves in a position to win. Now, we do have a three-minute delay here for game integrity in case anybody on the uh, team is watching, so we're going to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. I think in the matchup, Orn versus Akali, that's going to be a very fun matchup to watch. Orn normally wants to build armor. Akali does a lot of AP damage. Uh, I'd expect to see him tailor towards that early. But then as we get later on in the game, after we hit level 13, Orn is going to be giving the team that he's on a huge golden flux in terms of the upgraded items that just is going to start to snowball. So after we see that happen, um, we could be in for quite a game at that point. Trundle versus Volibear, I think that's a relatively even matchup. Um, both are kind of bruisery builds. You've got... Um, the Volley Bear, who does quite a bit of damage, he's a little bit more mobile, in my opinion, than the Trundle. Um, but you've also got a lot of Disengage or Engage coming from the Trundle, uh, a little bit more so than the Volley Bear with his pillar rising up and his slows that he offers. So I'm excited to see how those two are utilized on the map. We've got Silas into Oriana again. That was a great matchup last game. It was very even for the most part. Um, Silas does a great job of sustaining through a lot of those fights with his Kingmaker. And um, especially if he goes in his runes, any kind of healing or anything like that, he does a great job of being able to just absorb some damage and still put out damage as well. Uh, something that Oriana, she can put out a lot of damage, especially with her R, the way she moves the ball throughout the enemy team. The W can slow them down, give her speed a boost up. There's a lot of different things she can do, but she doesn't have the same sustain as a Silas. So it's just going to be how they play those two members. You've got Kaisa, you've got Ezreal. Kaisa, especially if they go Dirk, Noon Quiver, and Pickaxe and get that powered Q early in the game, can do devastating damage, especially if the Alistar is playing and gets a nice stun and knock up into somebody and holds them in a moment for a spot and all those Qs land on them. That can be a lot of damage coming out of that Kaisa in a team fight. But you've also got uh, Ezreal, who with Divine Thunder is going to be putting out a lot of damage and finds himself with the ability to sustain through the fights. Nautilus, very tanky, great engage so i'm excited to see how these team fights break out again one last time if you haven't done it hit the follow button and let me know who you think won the draft we've got cosmic remix over on the blue side with orm trundle silas ezreal and nautilus and we've got genius uprising over here with akali volibear oriana kaisa and alistar i'd love to hear your thoughts on it before we get into the game Don't all chat at once. All right, well, here we go. We're going to get to see what the uh, summoner spells and the runes look like on these champions as we get into the rift. All right, teleport, no flash on the Akali. She went with the Ignite. She is relatively mobile, so that makes sense. We've got teleports on the mid there as well. Both of our ADCs with heals and both of the supports with the Ignites. Um, everything looks pretty standard as far as the summoner spells go. I mean, not summoner spells, as far as the runes go. Let's go ahead and get everything pulled up here so that we can see how this is looking. Both junglers taking Chilling Smite, Oriana opting for the Corrupting Potion, Silas going for the Dark Seal there. And both teams running out on the rift as we speak. 
Thank you very much for tuning in. This is going to be the second game between Cosmic Remix and Genius Uprising. And there's a five-man blue stack going on the top side. They may be going for an invade here. Akali backing out, sets down the vision. They get spotted out, and they go ahead and back off. They have enough respect not to continue that in. Kaisa going to go ahead and drop some early vision on the bot side, then taking advantage of all the blue members on the top side. And a lot of backs and resets coming off of the blue team after the delayed invade doesn't go their favor. Not delayed invade, I guess it was a regular invade. But uh, we see the blue team bot side duo going over to help leash their jungler. Looks like he is going to be a little late to the party, but they might start it up without him and take some of that aggro anyways for him. And this game is officially underway. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, the first game went over to the side of Genius Uprising. That is the red team this game. They were able to lock it down the last time. Um, so we'll have to see how this game differs. Keep that up for us for a little bit so we can see what's going on. If any team fights break out, I will remove it. And if I don't remove it, yell at me in the chat and I'll do it afterwards. Nothing too crazy going on right now. Both teams just kind of farming it out. Poor Kali has not been able to uh, get very much CS. She looks like she's more interested in trading onto the Orn, but it's not going very well for her as she is taking quite a bit of damage and he's up almost a full wave on her. The Nautilus engage on the Alistar. A lot of damage coming onto the Alistar now. Nautilus getting chunked out himself, but Ezreal not slowing down. That's quite a little fight for level 2. Both teams should be able to heal up nicely from that fight, though, so I don't expect too much to come out of that. But it is nice to see that those bottom laners are trading and not scared to uh, try and defend their, their wave and try and step up a little bit. You've got the Silas going in heavy on the Orianna, but he takes more damage. Now the Akali here taking quite a bit of damage from that, uh, from that Orn. We've got Volleybear, who's going to be in for the gank, rotating around the Orn. Flashes just after the Volleybear. The stun still lands. The PTA is procced. And these two are going to chase him down. He's trying to get away. The Trundle comes in with the pillar and gets the disengage. Nothing will come of it. Two flashes blown on the side of Volley and Orn. This will leave Akali alone in the top lane to get a little farmed up and try and match where the Orn is. And she will do just about that. All right, we've got a lot of damage coming through now. The Alistar, barely alive, gets out of there. But, ooh, Ezreal gets a little close, isn't able to secure the kill onto the Alistar and takes some damage himself. Still pushes the Alistar out of there. But now it is a 2v1 here in the bot lane, and we are going to have Kaisa trying to pick up this farm and stay alive while she's uh, outnumbered. The Nautilus goes for some deep vision. is going to help secure that scuttle with the Trundle. Giving his uh, laner a little solo XP, which is kind of nice. Silas trying to get some damage on. He does quite a good job of chunking out the Orianna. She's taking a couple aggro shots from the minion wave and will run for the escape. She's going to go ahead and back. Akali did a good job of catching up in CS, but she is still taking quite a bit of damage from the ore and going to try and get away... Volleybear re-engaging. The flash is down on this orange, so there's nothing he can do besides just try and catch up. And the first blood will go over to Akali, who takes the dash back and locks up the kill. Good job to the Akali. Volley noticing that the, uh, the orange didn't have his flash and just being in the right place at the right time. Akali... Akali is going to go ahead and get up in CS. She's up almost 10 CS now. The teleport used on the Orn to try and match this wave. He's going to let it crash and just farm some of it up. And very good play from the Volley Bear. The Volley Bear was in the right place at the right time. Noticing that the flash was down on the Orn and uh, playing around that. Swoop back in and gets that stun on him again. Get, make sure to give enough time for the Oriana to take the dash back in and get the first blood. That was very well played from the Volley Bear and the Akali on the Orn.
Let's do a quick check in. Orn has managed to catch up NCS. Everything is relatively equal across the map. Uh, First Blood did go over to the side of Genius Uprising, so they do have a slight gold lead at this point. But nothing too crazy or that the Cosmic Remix team cannot do or undo at this point. Silas going in heavy on the Oriana. She takes quite a bit of damage, trying to poke back out, but she can't do much here. Now you've got the Akali putting out some damage onto the Orn. He's trying to run away, but the the grasp damage that goes onto that Oriana every time is really allowing him to stay in the lane, sustain against her, and really put out a lot of damage onto her. Now she's got the knockup coming down on her, quite a bit of damage. She's still hanging out in the lane, but we see Trundle in the area now saying, hey, you ganked my laner a couple times, I'm going to come up here and gank yours. The ult comes out from Orin, it's going to land onto the Akali. He takes a couple turret shots, but nothing will come of it. Going to try and chase out the Akali from there. He flashes away, but still takes a turret shot. And Orin will lock up the kill on the Akali. The trade comes out from the mid now. We've got the ult getting dropped from the Oriana onto the Silas. He's still alive, taking auto after auto. Quite a bit of damage coming through. He didn't respect the Q enough. He's got her ult. He's going to go ahead and go in and try and use it. Nothing comes of it, and he will just barely walk away. Teleport coming out from Akali to get back into this lane. She is going to try and catch up the CS that she is down currently. Volley looks like he went up there and played a little game with the uh, Orn again. He's been hanging out topside quite a bit. And this is a very good back and forth game, just like the other game. We saw lots of training, lots of jungler involvement. I'm excited to see, even with a different team comp, that the teams are both playing into this and they're not afraid to have some fun with it. Lots of pings coming out in the red side bot jungle. The Q uh, lands down onto the... Ooh! The heel comes down, barely saving the uh, Volley Bear, but he will ultimately fall to the Trundle. They find themselves in a 4v2, and we're going to see the Alistar and the Kai'Sa both fall over to the blue team. That is Cosmic Remix turning the tides of the game for them and putting themselves in a great position to get first Drake as well. With no teleport on the Akali or the Oriana, and the Oriana really not matching much there for the realm, it put them at a number disadvantage as well. Um, and the uh, the red team was just not able to sustain through that fight. Genius Uprising losing three members during that little skirmish in the jungle. The Ezreal ult comes out, just used to try and get this wave to push in and crash in a little bit here. And they're going to take a quick reset so they can spend the gold from all those kills they just locked up. Good job from the Akali dodging the uh, the pillar on the Orn. Orn taking quite a bit of damage. But it's kind of funny. Akali does her almost entire kit and gets the Orn down to the amount of damage that he gets from a single kill. Or not from a single kill, from a single auto rather, sorry. Volley Bear in the area, the Orn alt comes out, gets the barely misses the knockup on the Akali, disengages, and nothing more will come of that. We've got Engage coming out here in the mid lane. A little fight. Oriana trying to get some damage on to the Silas. She's going to chase, take a turret shot, barely getting out with his life. The Silas is able to escape that fight. Trundle swooping in, possibly looking for a gank on the Oriana, but decides, nope, I'm on vision. I'm going to go ahead and just clear that out and get out of there. Now Oriana getting engaged flashes to get away.
And Nautilus has done a good job of getting some of that deep vision so they can track where that volley bear is and be wise to what's going on. I think that was part of what won them that fight earlier is they had such good vision. They knew what was going on. They knew they were going to have the numbers advantage early, and so they took that fight, and they were able to get those kills onto their people as as they should have. Now we've got the Orn trying to engage onto the Akali. Again, that Akali takes a single auto, does almost all the damage that she puts out using her full kit on that Orn. So I don't know how those trades are going to go in her favor. Um, we're going to have to see what she scales out onto. Sorry, that was my fault. Let's take a look. He is going the Sunfire Cape. He's already got his Merc boots. So he's trying to build into that Akali and make sure that he's not taking too much damage from her. Silas misses his uh, abduct abscond, but now we've got two other members joining the fight here. Oriana gets the knockup from the Nautilus R, and the kill comes out from the Silas. He locks down the kill on that Oriana. Volleybear back topside. This is the fourth or fifth time he's been in the topside area. A lot of damage coming on to the Orn. The kill goes over to the Akali again. Great job from the Volleybear being in the right place at the right time. Looks like the right place for him is the top lane and the right time as always. He has been playing around it very strongly. Dragon going to be joining the map here in about 1 minute 30 seconds. The first dragon in the map was an air, uh, was a cloud dragon, so that means our soul will be either an ocean or a mountain. We'll have to look out for that. A mountain or an ocean is very great for the teams. It gives more sustain, more fight through the battle, uh, more shielding through the battles. And so we could see this turning into quite the brawl here. Nautilus hook lands onto the Kaisa. Alistar goes on to the Ezreal, not able to land anything. The alt comes out, barely misses the Kaisa. The W misses from the Ezreal. And Kaisa is going to take Kaudi a bit of damage. She goes ahead and flashes away. Ezreal does manage to get the kill onto the Kaisa, but Volibear shows up and is able to lock down the kill onto the Ezreal. The Dragon showing up in 40 seconds. Both teams without their ADCs right now. Kaisa is going to beat them to it, but it looks like both will be able to join the fight as it spawns up. And we've got Oria Orn taking quite a bit of the uh, turret plating here from the Akali. Akali trying to get some of that damage out onto the Orn Trundle in the area, saying, hey, if he's going to keep ganking topside, maybe I should do the same. Gets spotted on Vision, knows he's there, and he's just going to kind of come out of there. The Everfrost comes down. A lot of damage onto the Oriana. Alistar, right place, right time. Taking a lot of turret shots. He's able to land the Kingmaker, though. And now they're turning the fight around, but Volibear is going to get in the area. Silas is able to lock up the kill on the Alistar. Volibear turns it around and gets the kill onto the Silas. We've got Orn and Akali fighting out in the top lane. We've got the Trundle trying to flash into the uh, into the Oriana, but he's not able to lock up the kill, especially with Nautilus joining the fight. Now that's a lot of damage coming onto the Nautilus. The R comes out from the Nautilus onto the Oriana, and they're going to continue this dive. He's taking turret shot after turret shot. He might not make it out with his life just barely by the hair of his chinny chin chin. Is he going to be able to get out of there? And that was a lot of trading back and forth from the teams in the mid lane fight. Yeah, Volibear was not afraid to take some turret shots. I think total he took five to seven turret shots during that fight and was not able to lock up the kill, used his ult to shut down the uh, turret for a moment. Alistar tries to get the knock up onto, uh, onto the Ezreal, but he's able to dash out of there. Alistar playing very far forward, but getting hit with a lot of those skill shots, so he's not going to be very useful as a tank anymore. Going to back off a little bit. Meanwhile, you've got Silas roaming down for the engage. Kaisa out of position. She's going to get locked up with the Everfrost, and the kill goes over to Silas. Now we've got a teleport coming down. Orn is in the area. Kali's in the area. We've got Trundle joining the fight. Oriana and Volibear are also joining in, and we've got a 4v5 breaking out in the bot lane as Nautilus is working his way down into the area as well. The blue team is going to go ahead and start up this Drake, knowing that they've got a man advantage in the area. Looks like Oriana and everybody else is going to try and catch some, but Oriana will get caught out by the Abductive Scon. Alistar taking quite a bit of damage here from the enemy team, and he is going to fall over to the Ezreal. That means we're going to get to see an Ocean Soul on this map. That's two Drakes in favor of the side of Cosmic Remix already. They've got three more kills, and they've got a 3,000 gold lead, so good job to Cosmic Remix. However, Orn is going to have to dash to get out of there. And Trundle's going to drop the uh, 
the Rift Herald, and they're going to take this first turret in the bot lane. Orion alt onto the uh, onto the Silas. The Everfrost comes out. Orin gets his pillar onto her and gets the disengage for the Silas to go ahead and get out of here. The Flash comes out as she tries to land the Q onto uh, the Silas, but he takes quite a bit of damage from the Orn. And ladies and gentlemen, we have another back and forth game on our hands. The first game of the series was like this very much so. Teams equal in almost everything. Drakes were relatively well uh, well kept up throughout the match. Turrets were well kept. The kills were well kept. The CSing was relatively equal. This has been the first time in the games that Cosmic Remix has a little bit of a lead here. And I'm excited to see what they do with it. If they're going to build upon it or if they're going to end up falling down. Again, that Oriana, not afraid to trade out onto the Silas with that increased distance she gets from her Q and keep him poked at bay. The Orin giving a lot more respect to the Akali considering she's getting up with her items. But again, look at that. She drops almost her entire kit and he has already poked her out with two abilities. It's it, it, it's not going to work out well. He She needs to have the Volley Bear to help lock down those kills. Otherwise, she's not going to do anything more than tickle the Orin and press in her wave just a little bit. And we see Trundle, baby, getting ready to gank the top side as Akali pushes in kind of deep here. Nautilus also roaming up. And Akali's going to go ahead and give them respect, knowing that they were just spotted on Vision. Volleybear's in the area along with the, uh, the Alistar, but you've also got Trundle and Nautilus in the area. Ezreal and Orion are mid, and now everybody's going to swap down to the mid side. A lot of damage coming out onto the Orn now. Akali's finally starting to reach her own. And that's got to be the strategy, is just continuing to poke him out with ability after ability, knowing that as long as she can keep him at distance with her Qs, keep him at distance with her dash and stay off of him, she's going to go in hard for it. She's taking the dash, the flash comes out, the R comes out, and she is able to lock up the kill on the Orn. Meanwhile... The Cosmic Remix team is going to get their second turret of the game and force down mid-turret. And Cosmic Remix starting to take advantage of the lead that they have. Akali starting to snowball a little bit in that top lane. Let's take a look at everything real quickly. Akali putting out some damage onto the Trundle. Not too afraid to engage here. She's going to keep going in. The Ignite comes out. He disengages and gets out of there. But she's not afraid to fight against anybody now, especially being four and one. She's got her Rift Maker complete. She's got six, uh, six stacks on her Dark Seal. And she's already starting to build into another item. Red Team, meanwhile, the Genius Uprising team is going to try and secure themselves the second Rift Herald of the game just before it falls off the map here. But blue team is going to come into the area and say, no thanks, we're going to fight you for it. Flash is coming out, left and right. Lots of damage going on. The Oriana is... I'm sorry, the Orn alt comes out, and Silas gets the kill onto the Kai'Sa. Now Volley Bear will fall over to the Silas. Silas is going to go ahead and put some work onto the Oriana. <coughs> gets a triple kill. Silas is going to follow down and get the quadra kill. Silas is running through this team, locking down kill after kill. They will end up also getting the Rift Herald over to the red team. So that is going to be Genius Uprising, securing the Rift Herald, but at the cost of four members of their team. And they now have a 6,000 gold lead. They are up three turrets. They are going to most certainly get a fourth one here. They have two Drakes up. It is very hard for me to imagine how the re uh, Genius Uprising, the red team, can get back into this. Now, keep in mind, their Akali and their Volley Bear both have all the gold for the most part. So we need to see what they look like in a team fight setting. Akali has been doing great into the Orn, but once the fights start happening, if she can get onto the back line, do some damage to the Silas, do some damage to the Ezreal, she can honestly turn that fight around. But that's how the play has to go. 
Red Team secures their first Drake of the game and is looking at four stacking the Ocean Souls. We've got a lot of damage coming on to the Trundle. He locks, uh, he gets, ended up getting burst down. It's now a 5v4, but the Red Team has chunked out quite a bit. The Alistar will fall over to Matt G. We've got the Akali trying to output some damage, but having to run away from the Blue Team. Flash comes out of Oriana. A lot of damage from the Kaisa going out onto the Nautilus. We see Silas continuing to chase the Volley Bear. And it looks like Silas is going to continue to chase over here, trying to put some damage onto the Kaisa. Kaisa puts it back. The Orn ult comes out, gets the knockup onto the Oriana, and Oriana will fall along with the Kaisa. Orn and Silas both getting kills out of this, and they are starting to snowball. The team of Cosmic Relief, the blue side, is now getting quite a bit of a lead here, finding themselves up 7,000 gold at 21 minutes in the game. They have a real chance at closing this game out early and strong. We will have to see how the rest of the game develops, but they are not too afraid to start taking fights. This Silas is up 9-1. and one. The Ezreal is up 4-1. and one. The Orn, even though he's died four times to the Akali, still has two kills, six assists, already has his Bramble Best and his Sunfire complete. He can absorb quite a bit of damage from the enemy team. This is going very badly for, uh, for Genius Uprising. They've got to find a way to repace the game. Whether it's they need to start playing around objectives, they need to start playing around Akali or uh, the Volley Bear, they need to get some kills onto the Kaisa. They've got to find a way to slow the pace down. They've got to find a way to get some kills. They need skirmishes. Look for picks. Be smart about where the enemy team's going to be and have your members stacked up ready for it. They've got to find a way to control the game because at this point, they are finding themselves very much in a pickle. We've got another fight breaking out here in topside Red Jungle. Teleport coming in. Orn alt coming out with the Ezreal alt paired up. That's a lot of damage coming onto the Volley Bear. He will fall over to the side of Ezreal. Kaisa trying to put out as much damage as she can. The kill comes out on the Nautilus from the Alistar. We've got three more kills coming over to the red team, and that's going to be quite a bit of red going, and that is an ace for the red team. Good job, Genius Uprising, turning that fight around. They are able to lock up an ace, get themselves back in it, and turn it into just a 5,000 gold game. After just two minutes, they were down 7,000 gold. So that is what they need to do to turn it around. They need to get the right objective, uh, right fight, the right condition. They got a good engage. Blue was late getting all their members there, and they were able to take that fight and win it. Good job to Genius Uprising. They're going to get some objectives off of this. Looks like they have to drop the early, uh, Rift Herald at their base. Here goes Kaisa. She's just going to take down that mid turret and get them on the board. It is now a 4,000 gold game. That is a hell of a swing in favor of Genius Uprising. They have a real chance at staying back in this game now. I thought the game might have been close to being over, but they're not done clawing their way back into it. The Rift Herald will just barely get off into the bot lane, do a little bit of damage on there. It doesn't look like it was the most effective, but better it get used than not. And we have a lot of the red team in the mid trying to defend that turret. A lot of the blue team in the bot side red jungle. Um, this is what they're doing. They're looking for a pick. They're playing around the enemy team. They, this is what they have to do to stay in the game. Blue team is going to lose another turret, but now you've got Orn getting the pick off on, or the engage rather, onto the Kai'Sa. Alistar running. You've got five members huddled up against five members, and we can see another team breaking out here in Topside River. And we're going to wait and see how this all folds out. But both of them trying to play the poke game here. Ezreal landing lots of his little uh, cues onto the uh, Alistar. The blue team is going to get their wave pushing in. Try and command Pryo as the dragon is spawning in 15 seconds. The red team won't find themselves in a good position to try and contest for it. A fight breaks out mid lane. Orn is taking quite a bit of damage. The 
the Volley Bear alt comes out, and it looks like Orianna is able to secure the coil on Orn. We've got lots of fight breaking out. People are falling left and right. We've got Ezreal and Orn down. We've got Kaisa down. Both ADCs not in the game anymore. We see Alistar going to fall over to the uh, to the Silas. Orianna is able to get a kill. Now it is a 4v3. We find Silas, the only one in the area. He's going to trade out, and he might be able to get the triple kill here, the quadra kill. Oriana is just barely going to get out of there with her life, and the same for Silas, but he was able to lock up two more kills at the end of that fight. She's going to try and go in and get the kill on him. Nope. She's going to just start pushing this wave back out for their side. And guys, this is what I'm talking about. We've got a back and forth game. Now 4,000 gold separating the team. Still in favor of Cosmic Remix. But that Silas can only do so much he would have likely fallen to the Oriana or he would have gotten the quadra kill. But um, we... we we don't know who's going to win this game. This could be anybody's game at this point. Even though Cosmic Remix is still in the lead, the enemy team, the Genius Uprising team, has done a great job of picking these fights, getting more kills out, trying to fight around their win conditions, and uh, I'm excited to see this happening. We've got the blue team going in on the Drake now. Folly Bear starting to match in the area. All five members, they do lock up the uh, Ocean Drake for the blue team, and that puts them on sole point. Another fight breaking out here in the river. The Kaisa is taken down by the Silas. A lot of damage coming out. Or knocked out of the way. Volley Bear taking some damage. Silas is going to go ahead and clean that up. Now you've got Akali onto the back line, but she's surrounded by three members. She's going to try and get out, use her shroud, but she will get blown up and she will get killed by the Orn. That is going to be a four-man trade on the side of Genius Uprising falling to Cosmic Remix. And I'm going to see lots of pings coming out towards the Baron. Yes, it looks like the blue team, Cosmic Remix, is going to be running towards the Baron right now, having won that fight decisively, and they're going to try and give themselves a hell of an advantage and maybe push for the end here. Meanwhile, Silas pushing in that mid-wave to put some pressure on them and stop them from being able to answer onto it as members start popping up. Kaisa already back up. Volley Bear already back up. Alistar will be joining in five seconds, but you've got the Silas, who's not afraid to take a little bit of a fight. Kaisa now putting out a lot of damage onto him. Takes the RN and is able to lock up the kill on the Silas, getting a huge shutdown gold. Now you've got the uh, Baron falling over to the blue team. Ky uh, Silas will not have the Baron buff. This will be all members of the blue team besides Silas with the Baron buff. Um, and we find the red team is going to try and push out and try and keep what they can on the map. If you're just tuning in or if you've been watching with us for the whole time, don't forget to hit the follow button if you want to see more scrims like this. We host them weekly every day. And um, we've got a hell of a fight going on tonight. I'm glad you tuned in. We've got a back and forth game between Cosmic Remix on the blue side and Genius Uprising on the red side. Cosmic Remix has just secured the Baron, has a little bit of a lead going in, and it is on Soul Point. They find themselves in a very favorable position. But the Genius Uprising team won the last game, and it has done an incredible job of putting themselves in a position to win these fights. So we are going to see how this folds out as the blue team pushes in with Drake. I mean, with Baron Buff. All right, wave starting to crash in mid. Members, uh, Kali finds herself out of position, trying to get in onto the Ezreal. Now you've got the Volley Bear, the Oil Star, and the Kaisa engage. A lot of damage coming out onto the Ezreal. She finds herself almost getting poked out, though the Akali is going to stay alive, and Alistar will lock up the kill on the Nautilus. We have Silas getting the kill on Oriana. Kaisa doing a great job of staying alive, and she will lock up the kill onto the Silas. Al, uh, Akali will get the kill onto the Ezreal, and the red team now finds themselves in a three-for-one trade, doing very well into this blue team. Here comes Orn. He's caught out of position. Four members from the team collapsing on him, and he's going to get melted down. The kill will go over to Akali. Trundle now in the mid lane, trying to run away. Not much he can do. Baron Buff is only going to be good on him, and for not, very, uh, not for very much longer. The red team now finds themselves having traded out four-for-one, and they're going to try and push and get some objectives on the map. I see pings coming out for the bot side. I see a Kali roaming into the enemy jungle. And I see Kaisa pushing mid. 
They're trying to be efficient with their time, knowing that they've got a leg up for another 20 seconds or so. And this is a hell of a match. I love to see this kind of uh, gameplay. You've got the blue team who's been doing a really good job of winning team fights when it's on their turns. But if the red team gets an engage and catches the blue team off balance, they have a great chance of winning that game. The Akali was able to get onto the back line, fight the Ezreal, and take him out of the whole fight. So now you've got the ADC, Kaisa, still able to wail on the rest of the team. She's kept alive with all these shields, and she ends up surviving, getting the shutdown onto the Silas, and then continues to pump out damage. Meanwhile, the Akali just ran in there, got the kill onto the Ezreal, uh, Ezreal, and they were able to turn the fights around. This is the kind of action we like to see in these kind of games. This is a very high-level scrim between Plat Diamond players, and uh, this is the kind of stuff you get to see. And it looks like the end may be coming here in a moment. We've got another fight breaking out here in the bot side river. A lot of poke coming out from the Ezreal, but will it matter in the end? We're not sure. Akali's going to try and get in onto the team. She's going to drop the dash. She falls in. Orn alt coming out. Ezreal alt combined with it. They are going to put a smack down, and the blue team is going to get some of the damage out of there. However, the blue team is going to turn it around, and they are going to get kill after kill. Now the uh, uh, Kaisa is turning things around. And we've got a hell of a fight here. Kaisa was able to get the kills, but she falls ultimately to the Silas. And this is going to be the blue. This is going to be the blue team getting the. Uh, there it is, the Ocean Soul. Alright, we've got the blue team pushing in. A lot of damage coming out from that Ezreal onto the enemy team. Locks down the kill onto Alistar. The Volley Bear is going to fall to the Silas. The Kaisa is going to get chased down by the Silas. Looks like the ultimate from the Orin will land onto the Kaisa. She will fall as well. And you've got all members of the blue team just crashing in here. They get the ace. They've got the mid inhib. They're going to go ahead and push for an end here. And that will be Cosmic Remix getting their second win of the series. And that is going to finish the series up. Two wins going over to Cosmic Remix. None to the side of Genius Uprising. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was a hell of a series. 2-0 and in favor of Cosmic Remix. We are going to get over to the... Uh, <clears throat> we are going to get over to the uh, Genius Uprising team and uh, see what they have to say. So Genius Uprising won the first game. Cosmic Remix won the second game. It looks like we're not going to get a third series out of this... Uh, a third game out of this series. Let's go ahead and uh, pop in here. And I've got a couple people that are going to allow me to do some interviews. So stay with me for just a moment, and we'll get everything going for you. Thank you very much for tuning in.
just got we're just waiting for our jungler to come back. Anytime. It was definitely fun. <laughs> well, it, it, I hope it, you enjoyed the fiesta. Oh baby, I love I love fiestas. That's the only reason I play League Legends for games like this. You pick Malphite, dude. I'm pissed. <laughs> I, I don't want to play against that. So Jungle's right, back. Bye. So if you want to start the interview, you can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's me. You like that old? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I just think I fucked it. I um, thank I you. kept chasing him. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I, I think uh, normally that matchup, I feel pretty confident, but I kept chasing him and kept letting him get free ease. I should have just played in front of my turret, like behind my minions. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really play consistently this season. I, I'm just getting back into playing, so it's a little bit better. Yo. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was more like going against their whole team. They're tanky. That my only out is, or like the only one that I can actually one shot is Ezreal, and I missed E on him every like, I don't know. And maybe I landed it once out of the four times. Oh, I got killed so hard, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They're just very tanky. Yeah, he just... I was tickling him. I mean... Oh, uh, so I just wanted to get like top lane ahead. So, so we could, since it's a tank and since it's tank war into Akali, I felt like I needed to get Akali ahead so we could impact the map a bit more. Plus, I saw like Twundo bot side. So we, we will have won the 2v2 on Scuttle, uh, if we, uh, met. So that was the whole thought process. Yes, I appreciate it. Oh, nice, bro. Um, you can go. <laughs> I think we worked well on the disengages and trades for the most part. And that we just kind of tried to dodge the boat. Oh, gotcha. uh, that's Kaisa. Hmm. 
So during game two, I think it was like an overall consensus that our communication was a little rough compared to game one. So when we talked about, we didn't really talk about who we wanted to engage on. So I kind of just monkey brained it and went on whoever basically engaged first. Because I was basically split between engage and peel. So it was very awkward. For the fights that did went well, I kind of had to give more credit to Oriana for landing the more crazy R's for that. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank hey, you. No Thanks for watching, man. Oh, it's fun.